Hi everybody, Teddy here, Blade and Simple, back at you with another review. Um, if you if you subscribe, you follow my videos, you know it's been a little while, sorry, been a little under the weather. But, back at you with another review. New company, um, Steel Wheel Knives. Uh, well, it's owned by SMG, Sport Manufacturing Group. This is one of their newest um, companies they started, another company is called um, Gletcher. I apologize if I'm butchering the name. Gletcher, they're known for making a lot of airsoft guns, uh, stuff like that. Make some phenomenal products. They've been around since 2008. Um, this is a company that they started up in 2014. Steel wool knives, focusing on the outdoor market. They have three basic categories of knives. You have your outdoor, tactical, and urban knives. Took them several years, focusing, design, through design, concept, everything else, took them several years to design their full line of blades before they even released it. So a lot of thought went into this. We're going to get into that. I'm going to tell you about this product. This is the Steel Will Druid 215. I'm going to get into this. Great product. Awesome value. As always, I'm going to get into this too. So I'm going to tell you a bit about this cigar. Get this out of the way we're going to talk about that but before i do i want to give a quick shout out to fellow youtuber ninja lord hunter if you're a, if you're a if you're a gamer check his page out ninja lord hunter tons of content you're going to find something you like guaranteed so ninja lord hunter all right so let's get into the cigar um this is the camacho corojo it's a uh, corojo puro which means pure corojo 100% Honduran. The wrapper is a Jamaican Honduran wrapper. Honduran binder, Honduran filler. Country of origin, obviously Honduras. Full strength, but in my opinion, it smokes more of a medium to full. Not quite full, but it like, depends on your palate. Might seem like a full cigar. Great smoke. Um, it's a 7 by 48, 7 inches by 48 ring gauge. Flavor profile, a um, little bit of coffee, spice, earthiness, and you're going to get a little bit of um, fruitiness on the finish. Nice, sweet, fruity finish. Very well balanced smoke. Very enjoyable, actually. I'm having this with, should be having this with a coffee, and in my opinion, pairs perfectly with that coffee. That coffee really brings out that earthiness in a cigar. Beautiful combination. So, give this one a try, guys. Your cigar guy, cigar gal, brother of the leaf, sister of the leaf, give this one a shot. Um, again, it's a Camacho Corojo. This is the Churchill, 7x48. Beautiful smoke. If you're in Ontario, like I always say, check out Casa del Humidor. Tell them Teddy sent you. All right, let's get into this knife. I said steel wool knives they've only been around since 2014 so it's only been a couple of years and from what i've seen this is some of their first line i love what i'm seeing love what i'm seeing um i said they really started off in the airsoft market making airsoft rifles really highly detailed replicas um they're prized by hobbyists as well as target shooters they really focused on the outdoor market. Um, people who, for some reason or other, maybe cultural, religious reasons, like weapons, like guns, just don't want to own one, don't want to own a real gun, they go and they get their, the Gletcher Airsoft Rifles. Great guns, great rifles, great, great, great stuff. They make some fantastic stuff, so you want to check them out. When I heard about Steel Will, I did a little bit of con a little background information. Um, like I said, it took several years design before they even came out with a full line. They have their three basic categories. You have your outdoor, tactical, and urban. Very simple. Keep it short, keep it simple. It took several years design before they even came out with it. So a lot of time, effort, money went into developing their lines. They paid attention to every detail from the handle, blade material, even to the sheath. You're going to love this sheath. 
when I get into it, I'll show you this is probably one of the best sheets I've seen on the market. We'll get into that. So steel wool knives, you definitely want to give them a shot. Except they've only been around since 2014. And from what I see, I'm completely thrilled with this company. Love what they're doing. Um, let's get into a little bit of specs on this blade. Um, overall length, 9.25 inches. Blade length, 4.53 inches. It is a clip point design, slight upswept clip point design with a false swedge right there, as you can see. Flat grind, um, not flat grind, sorry. Saber grind, secondary bevel. 9CR18 MOV. I will tell you what that means after. Um, blade thickness, 0 0.14. Hardness, 58 to 59. Handle material, thermal plastic elastomer. Get into that too. Handle thickness, 0 0.86. Like I said, leather sheath. Weight, 5.3 ounces. That's your basic specs. Now, 9CR18 MOV. What does it basically mean? 9CR18 basically means 9% carbon, 18% chromium, and the rest is molybdenum and vanadium. If I butcher those names, eh, forgive me. Well, um, basically, both those things, the molybdenum and vanadium, just add in hardness, edge retention, and durability. Both do the exact same thing, okay? The chromium adds in rust resistance, corrosion resistance, and of course, you know what the carbon does. Carbon does it, provides a better edge, okay? So it's fairly simple. It is a Chinese-made stainless steel, okay? When you're looking at a product of this quality, I'm sorry, guys, what you're paying for this, you're going to expect them to recoup some of that cost somewhere. It is in the steel. So... The handle has a bit of a palm swell here. Nice palm swell. I really do like the design of this handle, especially when it has this drop off right here. Fits the palm of your hand perfectly. That fits right in the palm of your hand. Has a bit of a front key on, rear key on, flat belly. This nice checkering pattern on the TPE handles. TPE, thermoplastic elastomer. It's a, it's a bond between plastic and the rubber. That's it. Performs almost, almost like a polyurethane material in performance. Very durable, very sturdy. It's grippy. It's not going to slip even if it gets wet in your hands because of this checkering pattern. Beautiful pattern. I like that they do not carry that checkering pattern along the spine of the blade, along the spine of the handle. I love that. It'll be a little too aggressive in your hands if they did. There's no jimping, which I love. There's a bit of a pommel here. Lanyard hole. I would have loved to see in this lanyard hole, maybe a, a hair bigger. In my opinion, it's a little too small. I would have liked a bigger, a bigger lanyard hole. But that's just nitpicking. I do like the clip point design. I do like it. I like this saber grind. I'm still getting used to the edge. It has a bit of a recurve, a very slight recurve, as you can see. Um, not a huge fan of a recurve because recurves, they're a bit of a pain in the, you know what, to feel sharpen because of that recurve. So guys, get one of these. Work sharp feel sharpener. The ceramic rod, beautiful for feel sharpening, especially with a recurve blade. You're not going to have an issue. Um, another thing you can do, what I did was a back and strop. I just put some honing compound on there. Feel dress my knife, feel sharp my knife if I want to, no problems. So, ergonomics fit in the hand, fits beautifully. It is a little small for my hands, but like I wear extra large size gloves. If you wear a large size or smaller, this will fit you beautifully. But as you can see, that handle is completely gone, it disappears in my hands. Okay, so I wear extra large side gloves. It's a bit small for certain tasks, but in your standard grip, it fits me 
perfectly. This drop off point that creates this high spot here really fits in the palm of your hand beautifully. Amazingly, it's super comfortable. Ride your thumb, ride that spine. You can do your detail work, you can do your slicing, you can do your feather sticks, and it's very ergonomic, very comfortable. You can use this extended periods of time without hand fatigue. There's zero hot spots, no hand fatigue. It's a nice um, satin finished, satin finished blade. Very nice. You can use it in tactical applications if you choose to, because it is front, because of the front and rear kilons, locks your hands in. You're in there sturdy. This traction here provides excellent grip, so you can thrust. You can slash, you can do your reverse thrust, reverse slash, whatever it may be, and you're locked in. There's no need for jimping. Like an, I would not recommend using this as a tactical blade, but you can if you need to. Because of this clip point, this false swedge here, it's going to have excellent penetration. So, great blade for that, uh, that those applications. But chances are you're not going to because of this finish. If you need it in a tactical application, you really don't want this shiny finish but it can be used. Um, that tip will also, if you're into primitive fire making techniques, the tip on this blade will be beautiful for hearth boards, for burning in your holes. Be great work. Um, great for bushcrafting, actually. So we're gonna do a little work with this. We are not, I repeat, not gonna do batoning. It is not, a, it's not a chopper. It's a small outdoor knife. You're going to use it for finer detail work. You're going to use it for kindling. You're going to use it for fire making. You can use it for hunting. Those are the tasks you're going to use it for. You're not going to use it for a lot of wood processing. That's why I carry a chopper. That's why I carry a bigger knife for large wood processing. You can use this for hunting. The flat spine, no jimping. You can choke up. There's sufficient enough width on this blade where you can choke up, especially in that tip here. You can do your skinning, you can do your slicing. You can put your thumb against this key line here. Like you, can, you can do your up slice for skinning. Um, chest cuts, it's a bit awkward, mainly because of the size of this handle and the size of my hands. This is a bit awkward for me for chest cuts, laying my thumb flat. Really can't because I can't get a good enough grip. This. This rare key on here really kind of digs into my hand. You can do it in this manner. You can do chest cuts this way if you choose to. I'm not a fan of chest cuts, so it really doesn't matter to me. I would prefer, I would actually like to see this handle just a little bit bigger to accommodate those with larger hand sizes, but it is still a great blade. This rare key on here, you can grab onto it, and I love this design, this, this angle here to the butt of the handle really provides a really secure point for you to grip in the back if you want to do some little minor chopping, you know, chop, clearing some limbs. That'll work great for that. So it is a great knife, beautiful design. I like the slight recurve. It can be a pain to sharpen, can be. There are a couple of tricks you can use. I'm sure you can look on YouTube, Google it. You can find it out. I'll show you right now a great little trick. Just use the edge of your strop, the edge of your strop here. Just lay the edge and run it against the edge of your strop. Okay, that's a great way just to hone that edge. That's a great trick to use. Or like I said, get yourself one of these work sharp feel sharpeners. You can use a ceramic rod, run it against a ceramic rod, refine your edge, right back to shaving sharp. So it's not impossible. Get yourself one of those, easy to do. So let's get into this. Um, Let's get into the cutting of, let's do some processing, sorry. I'm not gonna do a lot of batoning, just gonna do some simple kindling stuff along those lines. And we'll go from there, see what we think of this blade. Well, we use this piece of wood. Again, this stuff is extremely dry. I'm in my basement. The weather's getting nicer outside, okay? We're in Canada, it's getting nicer. Summertime, I'm gonna do some videos outside for you guys, but for now, this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get my fancy basement, okay? I'm sorry, Psst. it is what it is. I'm from the Caribbean, and I'm not made for that weather. This is some batoning, see what we think. Okay. 
I like the saber grind. It splits really well. I don't feel any drag on the blade. It actually runs through really smoothly. The edge, still really sharp. Um, there's no chipping. There's no rolling. There's no dulling of that edge that is still extremely sharp. Very nice. Went through the wood effortless, effortlessly. Wow. Um, let's try torque display a little bit. Okay. Let's try something different. Um, I want to try this little pommel section out. Let's see what this does. Okay. Okay, that tip is still amazing. It tapers down because of that false switch. It tapers down, but it's still extremely strong. It's still an extremely strong tip. Let's try a little um, feather sticking with this and see how it does. I'm not used to this edge geometry. I've been using a lot of Scandi grinds lately. So I've been become really comfortable with the Scandi grind. Still trying to get used to this edge. It's like anything else. You spend enough time with it, you're going to get used to it. You're going to know what angles to ride that edge properly to get the best results. So far, wow. Um, it's a really, really nice working edge. No issues. As you can see. Some great work there. This, that'll take a spark really well. So um, I'm impressed with it. Um, let's try some chest cuts. I can't do it this way, so I have to do it like this. Let's try some chest cuts and see how it does. See, that's really nice. Very clean cuts. Try some push cuts here and see how it does. We just use the tip of the blade here, this tip, and see how it does in the push cuts. Great working edge. Um, let's check sharpness. Still really sharp. Really, really sharp. Um, if you saw my review on the Boker Bushcraft XL, you know I am not a fan of stainless steel. Don't like them. The only place I think a stainless steel belongs is in my kitchen. Okay, but I am very impressed with this one here. The edge retention is great. Sharpness, beautiful. Comes out of the box beautifully sharp. They pay attention to the way they package it. You order this, you're going to see when you get it, you're going to be impressed by the packaging. Just the attention, the detail that goes into the packaging. You put that effort into that. Ooh, what else goes into your blades? You show you pay a lot of attention to your product, which I really like. Sorry, I said. I'm a cigar guy, you should expect this by now. All right, let me have a sip of my coffee here. Okay, now let's check out the sheath. Hands down, one of the best leather sheaths I have gotten with a knife, period. Every time I get a knife, and you've seen a couple that have leather sheaths, I always see the same thing. It needs a dangler. It needs a dangler. Steel will gives you a dangler. Another thing you always hear me say, where is the drainage hole? Steel will drainage hole. There's even a bit of a hole. You can't really pick it up in the camera right there. Right there, it's a bit of a hole right there. Attention to detail, next to none. Really nice, thick leather, durable, great dangler. You have four, you have four um, rivets here, holds it in place beautifully, very sturdy, very comfortable. 
I love the way that it, when it actually dangles, the way it's supposed to, fits the fit. You're not getting this out. You can shake this. You can probably mount this upside down and don't have to worry about losing your knife. The fit, beautiful. Attention to detail, beautiful. Very nice stitching. I love the reinforced eyelets at the top. Beautiful. You can put a bit, I guess if you chose to, you can put a bit of power cord here, or lash it to your belt, or carry it on a strap like this. You can do whatever you choose. Beautiful package, amazing package. I mean, what I gotta say about this? I mean, design of this blade, especially this handle, one of the most comfortable handles I've gotten my hands on. Even though it is small for my hands, still one of the most comfortable I've gotten my hands on. Design, five out of five. Beautiful, amazing design. You can tell they put a lot of thought into this. Five out of five. As for the iffy, you know, a lot of people are iffy on the, the 9CR18 MOV. They're iffy on the Chinese stainless. There is nothing iffy about this. This is a beautiful blade, great edge retention. That recurve wants to cut amazingly. It's gonna do great in any task you need it to. Cutting, slicing, rope cutting, food prep. It's gonna be amazing. Hunting, if you're a hunter, you need something stainless, you don't wanna worry about constantly having to oil your blades. Or worry about corrosion. This is a fantastic option. Check out Steel Will's Druid Lie. This is a Druid 215. Check it out, you're gonna love it. So the knife itself, four and a half, if not five out of five. I apologize for that. Like I said, it is winter time. That's gonna go on from time to time, so forgive me. If not four and a half, if not five out of five, I would prefer, honestly prefer to see this in a carbon steel, but I do like this. Sheath, five out of five. There's nothing bad for me to say about this. That is a five out of five, all day long. Package. Four and a half, if not five out of five. Like I said, my only up, the only problems I have with this, handle's a little small, and I would love to see carbon steel. Otherwise, amazing, amazing product, guys. And better yet, 50 to 60 bucks. Cheaper than a Boca Bush for Craft XL, and no comparison. Check this one out. Blade HQ, um, Knife Center, wherever you guys get your knives, you can check it out. If you're in Ontario, you can check out srknives.com. Not sure if they have it, but you can talk to them. I'm sure they can get it for you. Give them a shot, check them out. So guys, get yourself one of these. Get yourself one of these. Steel Will Druid 215. Amazing plate, you're gonna love it. So till next time guys, I'm Teddy. This is Blade and Simple.